Welcome back. It's Wednesday, June 29th, 2011. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye. And today I'm joined by my good friend, Susan Lindauer. And Susan, during the break, you and I were discussing Pan Am uh, Flight 103 that crashed in Lockerbie. And, it, you know, we both feel that it's important that people, again, it, we, and hear the message and that we reiterate the fact that that was not Libyans at all. It was Syrians acting under control of the CIA, and the reason they did it, and, I'm, and Susan will be able to uh, you know, mm-hmm. get into detail about it, but the reason they did it was because there was a CIA oversight team that came in and found out what this team was doing, and they said, whoa, what the hell are you doing? You can't be doing yeah. this. And they were going back to D.C. to end it, and... They got ended instead because they said that, the, you know, obviously this little rogue CIA element didn't want to lose its funding and didn't want to be tattled on, which happens all the time. These guys go yeah. off the grid. They go nuts. They get, they get you know, flooded with their own power, like delusions. Yes. Of <laughs> and they go off and they do crazy stuff. Sometimes it really isn't a huge conspiracy. Sometimes it's just a small one involving a small group team but in this case this the cia team uh whether they were acting on instructions or not they they blew up pan am flight 103 and then blamed it on the libyans so susan go ahead and you know expound on that that is that is absolutely correct it was fascinating um to and and i want i want to tell you something i have confirmation of this from my own CIA handler, Dr. Richard Fuse, who was in, he, he, was, he was the only human intelligence involved in Syria uh, at a certain period of the 1980s. And he had worked with Robert Baer, but he stayed in longer than Baer did. Um, so they had worked together at one point, but then Richard was in alone for a while as well. Um, and he had met Hafez al-Assad and all kinds of, he, he, was, he, he was business partners with Raisa Gorbachev. And um, on the surface, the cover was that they ran a modeling agency, a Russian modeling agency, the Natashas. <laughs> but behind the scenes, they sold computers to the Soviet government that had a back door for the CIA to hack into the Soviet government. <laughs> And and Richard told me that was Richard was the first to insist that Lockerbie was uh, uh, a CIA operation that had backfired. It was like a, a false flag operation. Um, uh, the CIA had a rogue team had gotten involved in heroin trafficking out of the Baca Valley during the, host, the the Terry Anderson hostage crisis. Uh, Ninety six high profile Westerners had been kidnapped by uh, Islamic jihadi groups. And those included Terry Anderson, who was the Associated Press reporter, Jerry Levin, who was the CNN bureau chief. They took Terry Waite, who was the Anglican emissary for the, for the, for the Anglican bishop uh, in Britain. They took the head of the International School in, in, of Beirut, Um, And and a whole bunch of of high-profile Westerners like that, very high-profile. And Terry Anderson was held for seven years. He was chained in a basement, okay? Uh, Jerry Levin was was held in a farmhouse, also chained, I believe, for three years. And these people didn't get out for one hour a day. Like like, Like if you're in prison, you get to go out for one hour a day and kind of stretch your legs. When we say they were chained, they didn't move for seven years. This is hideous stuff. They peed in a bucket. They were beaten. They were subjected to mock executions. Um, this, they, 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 and, and some of them were tortured. Uh, the CIA bureau chief, uh, Buckley, was tortured to death. And when I say tortured to death, they beat him with bricks and chains. They smashed his skull, they broke his ribs, they tore out his fingernails, they may have torn out a couple of teeth. Didn't they take uh, down a hotel in response to them doing that or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, these, these were really bad, bad people. So the CIA had Which, rationalized... Which, by the way, do exist, not to cut you off, but yes, they do yes. exist. Because <laughs> I, I, I say all the time that radical Islam... I, I, I get a lot of heat for this because I say, well, we created it. We did create yeah. it, but it's a beast yeah. that got out of our control. So, yes, there are actually 
bad guys out there. So that's even worse because we, we focus on a phantom entity that doesn't exist when we should really be focusing on these evil, sick, twisted guys that we trained and now let loose. And now they're creating their own little psychopaths all over the world. Well, now, now you, this is very important, what you just said, because, see, it started off with a good, with a, a good intention. And I, I also heard from, not only from my CIA handler who told me the story, but one day I had been the press secretary for Senator Carol Mosley Braun. And during this Lockerbie negotiations, I went out to, of our office on the Hart Building, you know, downtown Washington, you know, Capitol Hill, and, and I went out for lunch, and, and some guy grabbed me as I was walking across the Supreme Court office, and he said, hello, Susan Lindauer, I've been waiting to you uh, for you. I want to talk to you. And he took me out for lunch, and I've never known his name. He didn't tell me his name. He didn't want me to know his name. But he said, I want you to hear the other side of the story. So he told me their side of the story. So I know Richard's side, and I know their side. And what happened from their side was that they lost control of the situation. Uh, but they had originally decided that they would infiltrate the heroin trafficking in order to uh, identify where the hostages were being held. The problem was there was within that team, there was a rogue double agent who continuously fed information about when the CIA was closing in, like they were going to capture the guys. They were, they were moving in. They were identifying where the, the, the hovels and the, 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 the coven of the, 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 the alleyways where they were being held in, these, in the basements and these strange off places, you know, off the map places. Uh, and as soon as the CIA would close in, all of a sudden they would be moved again. And that's because there was an insider on the CIA side who was telling the Islamic Jihad when the CIA was coming in. I'm willing to bet and the so, guy was Mossad, and I, I had to throw that in there only because that happens a lot, and that happened before 9-11, too. The FBI was watching uh, – uh, or the FBI and the CIA were keeping an eye on a bunch of terrorists, and every time th they would, you know, make, try to make a move on them, right before they would go to make a move, these guys would change up and and change That's how they right. were doing things. So That's and, right. and, and it all leads back, and I say Mossad because they have their fingers involved because they have an agent buried inside every every. Every Middle Eastern, you know, radical group there is. It doesn't matter which one it is. Mossad has an agent buried within at least one agent buried within each one. So they know what's going on. So that would be very easy for them to pull the strings on both sides. And I'm not saying, again, that's not being an anti-Semite because Mossad's controlled by the very same evil people that control the CIA, the NSA, and everybody there else. You go. So it's just one hand playing the other hand against each other. That's what they do. So I didn't mean to interrupt exactly. you, Susan. I just wanted to make no, sure No, no, not that. at all. That is, that's a very, very good observation. And, and, and it's, it's true. Um, they are... The, the, the problem was that, like, for example, Terry Anderson ended up being held for seven years. So these people, and, and it was in, these were in deplorable conditions. So the CIA had gone in ostensibly to infiltrate the heroin trafficking, which should have taken six months. And the whole operation should have been mopped up, catching everybody, getting all those people out of there, six to eight months at most. It shouldn't have taken any longer than that. Instead, it takes seven years. It kind of makes you wonder why it took that long. Yeah. You know politics were playing into that, and, you know. Well, and, and uh, yeah, and when we come back, we can talk about how how they were, how they, how they it did work. Okay. And how then Libya got shafted on Lockerbie. All right, we'll pick up right there when we come back from break. Nice segue, Susan. We'll be right back, guys. It's down the rabbit hole. You listen to me on the Orion Talk Radio Network, micro 1650 AM. They lie, they scam, they cheat, and steal. They plot, they fun, they act, it's real. They watch, they hunt, they punish, and kill.